Alright, buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, today I'm going to address Wedden1051919's 105, question in his comment. He says, I know that in Daniel 9, it's talking about Jesus causing the sacrifice to cease. When I read Daniel chapter 8, verses 9 through 11, it sounds like it's saying the Antichrist takes the sacrifice away. What are these verses saying? All right, so that's a great question. Um, so let me read those verses first. And out of the womb, I'm sorry, and out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them yeah he magnified himself even to the prince of the host and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away the place and the place of the sanctuary was cast down all right so um, first of all let's establish this is a talking about the fourth beast of Daniel all right, which is also what people reference as the Antichrist, and it is also the beast of Revelation. All right, so we have two possibilities here, and one is that the Antichrist takes away the daily sacrifice by offering his body as the perfect sacrifice to God. Now I, I'll contend that another view, I'll strongly contend this view, that it's Jesus Christ that offered his body as the perfect sacrifice. Just as we read in Hebrews 10 verse 14, for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified all right so when Jesus laid down his life he put an end to the daily sacrifice or the daily sacrifices that were once taking place he puts an end to those sacrifices when he laid down his life now what's interesting here in Daniel chapter 8 verse 11 it says by him the daily sacrifice was taken away speaking of the fourth beast by him the daily sacrifice was taken away meaning that the Messiah that we read about in Daniel 9 he's going to be killed by the fourth beast so this is exactly what happened all right, so it was the Romans, which is the fourth beast, the fourth kingdom, the Roman Empire. They are the ones that killed the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's true that the Jews killed the Lord Jesus, but the Jews had the Romans do it right here in first Thessalonians 2 speaking of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men speaking of the Jews they killed the Lord Jesus but they forced the Romans to actually execute that death so it was actually the Roman Empire or the Roman soldiers even that had that actually killed the Lord Jesus and we read about the Roman soldiers piercing the Lord Jesus okay and so here in Daniel chapter 8 when it says by him this is speaking of this fourth beast the fourth kingdom on earth until the end of the world by him 
is the daily sacrifice taken away and we get a little more detail in chapter 9 when it says the Messiah who will make an end of sins <clears throat> excuse me so this is all in reference to what the Lord Jesus Christ has done he has made an end of sins he has made reconciliation for iniquity he has brought in everlasting righteousness when he laid down his life as the perfect sacrifice unto God alright so thereby he has made an end or put an end of the daily sacrifice he has caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease and this we're going through this period of time now until the consummation which is the marriage of the bride and Christ when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are, are lifted up this is the marriage of the Lamb this is when we are united as one with the Lord Jesus Christ and remember Jesus is has led the way the whole the whole time All right, so Jesus laid down his life to be that perfect sacrifice the perfect offering to God for our sins he laid down his life that means he died and then he rose back to life all right and so also because we follow him we also will die and raise back to life and ascend to heaven just as Jesus has already done for us right he is our perfect role model he is our perfect example and we follow him just as he has done so also will we do right so for example first Corinthians 15 for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet right so as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming so Jesus has led the way for us he has died and rose from the dead and ascended to heaven and we're gonna follow him to the grave and then back up out of the grave up into heaven and we're gonna meet him in the clouds just like what we read in first uh, Thessalonians first Thessalonians 4 right at the last trump right first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord all right so this is what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right we're gonna follow him just as he he has led the way for us right just like Moses led his people out of the wickedness of Egypt and into uh, the promised land if you will so Moses led his people out of that wicked world so also will Jesus lead us out of this wicked world and he has already created the path for us to follow and now it's just a matter of time before we follow the path that he has already taken all right so in Daniel 8 when it talks about for by him the daily sacrifice was taken away this is only in reference to our Lord Jesus Christ dying or laying down his life for us during this time of the fourth beast the fourth kingdom which is also referenced as the Antichrist so hopefully that makes sense for you Wedden 105 1919 I appreciate uh, this kind of question because it leads to further discussion and hopefully 
this will help somebody. I know it'll help me to help strengthen me, to sharpen me, and help build confidence in me. And hopefully, by talking about it, I can do the same for you. Okay, thanks again, Wynn. Appreciate it.